right now in, in war, for the most part still, it, there's a human being who's making a decision whether or not to fire a weapon of any type. If robotics were allowed to fully develop and they were autonomous, killer robots, as I like to call them, they would be able to be programmed, set free, and make the decisions about when, where, who, and how to attack. A number of governments, including the United States, are very excited about moving in this direction, very excited about taking the soldier off the battlefield and putting machines on the battlefield, thereby lowering casualties. There's nothing in artificial intelligence or robotics that could discriminate between a combatant and a civilian. It would be impossible to tell the difference between a little girl pointing an ice cream at a robot or someone pointing a rifle at it. Killer robots don't exist yet. There are precursors, systems that can make determinations but have a human who can override their decisions. With fully autonomous robots, you take the human out of the loop. There are precursors both on the ground and in the air that are problematic and show the development of autonomous technology is getting into a dangerous area. There's a weapon called the X-47B produced by the United States. At this point, it's designed to refuel by itself and land on an aircraft carrier by itself. However, it is also designed to carry weapons, and if it can eventually fly by itself, as is intended, it would also be able to identify targets and launch its weapons without any human interference. Samsung's intelligent surveillance and security system with the capability of detecting and tracking as well as suppression is designed to replace human-oriented guards, overcoming their limitations. On the ground, there is a sentry robot used by South Korea and Israel. The sentry operates by identifying people that enter a certain area. It then asks permission of a soldier back at base whether it should fire or not. If the soldier grants that permission, it shoots the individual. Our concern is that that permission may not always be required, that a robot could fire without any human intervention. If a robot goes wrong, who's accountable? It certainly won't be the robot, but it could be the commander who sent it off, could be the manufacturer, it could be the programmer who programmed the mission. Uh, the robot could take a bullet in its computer and go berserk. So there's no way of really determining who's accountable, and that's very important for the laws of war. Human Rights Watch is so concerned about the dangers of these fully autonomous systems that we think that a preemptive, comprehensive prohibition on the development or production of these systems needs to be enacted immediately. I believe that civil society has a right and obligation to take action when they believe that a government or a military is behaving incorrectly in their name. That was part of what helped inspire the campaign to stop landmines, the coalition to stop cluster munitions, both of which were successful, of course, in achieving treaties. I know we can do the same thing with killer robots. I know we can stop them before they ever hit the battlefield.